So this is 3400 Moira on Rialto. Looks to be, um, it's gonna be replay. That's actually pretty helpful because I can see the team comps the entire game. Okay, let's start. It probably means there isn't gonna be any comms, but I don't have a problem with that to be honest. Okay, I like the damage orb here. Um, one thing I might note here. I don't know, it isn't really a big comment, but you could have aimed that orb a little bit more on the corner of the... Crap, I just double clicked. <laughs> so you kind of threw it... Um, in the center of this uh, archway here, the middle archway. Usually when I throw orbs around corners or try and get ar early ult charge like this, I'll throw it as close to the, the corner or the edge of the the corner that the enemy is hiding behind as possible. Um, of course you you are very low health at this point because you peeked around the corner and took a fire strike and then I think some type of explosive damage here. Um, yeah, this is 3400. So when aiming orbs like this around, like trying to get an early old charger on corners, just aim as close to the edge as possible. Of course, this is really nitpicky because in this situation, you didn't really have much time to do this given you're taking so much damage. There's a better chance of getting moral charge in those situations. Okay, Rissa Hog, you're running the classic bunker here. I mean, it's not completely classic because you don't have like the full setup with the Baptiste and everything. That was a really good damage orb. Like, it's not as close to the corner as I might have thrown it, but it got completely used. And not only that, but you got advantage of that. Um, you can hear the ticking of the discorded target being hit by the damage orb. It's always a really nice sound because it means that. The damage orb is going to get used up faster. Nitpick everything, okay. <laughs> this might sound really weird, but I don't think that you needed to use a healing orb there. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that. So, your team is, they, they're not really that low, and you, you're only 50% on your ult right now. So, despite the fact that you're, you almost have no healing resources, um, I would have tried to throw a damage orb to get more ult charge and then heal them up with, with your Bite of Grasp here. Because I think just like one small spritz of Bite of Grasp would heal, would heal them all up. In this way, you can get moral charge because you're you, you're both damaging and healing at the same time instead of just healing. I say this a lot about healing orbs, but only use them when you really need them. Otherwise, you could be getting uh, moral charge by going for a damage ability. Unlucky! <laughs> oh my god, that's the trap is. I would not have expected that. It always sucks when you get hit by a trap and then um, your team's already sort of pushed up and like why was that even there? <laughs> like it's just unlucky. Yeah, or old farming. It's a good strategy. Again, I don't think you need that healing orb. So I guess I'll make another comment about it. I mean, right now you're completely full on resources. You could totally go for just regular Biotic Grasp to heal up. And then wait for a better time to use Damage Orb or something. I will also note something I'm seeing that I was going to mention before, but I didn't think it was going to be this... Um, uh, I don't know the right word for it, but anyway. You could use some better 
um, tracking with your by the grass peeling. So you're you're fine with um with damage. I've seen you you're doing fine with with tracking, but with your healing um by the grasp, your accuracy with your um projectile whatever it is um is not very is not very good. I think you, it could use some work. You would save a lot on healing resources here. If for example, let's see. Like, healing up this Zen probably took you about three times as much resources as you needed to to effectively heal up the Zen. Not to mention with Zenyatta, I'll typically just give him a, sm a small spritz of healing um, because Zenyatta heals his shields automatically. <clears throat> so unless the Zen is taking direct damage, you can typically just give him a small spritz and then they'll be completely fine. That actually was not a bad coalescence, despite you using it kind of early here. I might have waited a little bit to use it. Typ I mean, typically I will say use ult off cooldown, but in this situation, your team isn't really pushed up that far, and this Zarya is already dead. Like, even if you don't use your ult here, the Zarya is going to die. I would wait for your team to be a little bit more ready to to advance and then use your ultimate so deal with azaria heal up your team and then once your team is ready to go in you can use your ultimate aggressively because what you don't want to do is use your ultimate just for defensive purposes like you end up trying to heal up your orissa here for a, for a good like three or four seconds and if you'd already healed up that orissa before you used your ultimate then um you can just use your ultimate for purely offensive purposes later in the game. Hold on, my roommates' housemates are being kind of loud. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, like this this use of coalescence right now is excellent. You're going for what is it, both healers, I think. Yeah, so it's a good kill in the Zarya, but then like I said before, you end up having to use about three seconds of your ult just to heal up that Zarya. I mean the your Arissa. I like this fade. Yeah, that was really good. Overall, that was a really good play. Just this, just like small notes on about your coalescence usage, I think. One thing I'll note about these last two damage orbs that you used. They could be aimed better. Both of these damage orbs, they, were, they had the right intention, but I think if you spent a little more time aiming them, they would have had more use. So like this one, it ends up hitting the the bridge and bouncing upwards <clears throat> while that's not the end of the world if it was just parallel to the ground and didn't and and didn't hit the bridge there you would have also hit the rind with that damage orb which would have gotten you some moral charge so maybe spend a little bit more time aiming the orb just so it gets the full u full usage and doesn't bounce away I'm on fire. like it was good that you picked off the hanzo with it but that's all that's the only use that that orb got i feel like when throwing orbs, you often have to think about the primary use and then think about a secondary use that the orb might get if it's already been used. The first use, <laughs> that was really confusingly worded, but pretty much you just try and try and get the most use out of damage orb possible or healing orb in this, um, this situation. Um, yeah. And then this other damage orb here. You just kind of toss it way too high there's no reason to toss it up there unless there's an enemy in this window i don't see any enemies in this in that window um i would just try and go for a, a very parallel to the ground damage orb 
that's usually the best um, usage of damage orb just to get the, the maximum value because it'll bounce back and it won't be used I mean it won't be wasted in that way it'll always be bouncing around an effective area Hey Sidosa Wait, how did that damage orb come back to you? Hold on. <laughs> I have no idea how that works. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> you can you can call me that for 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 messing that up on the commentary, but for some reason the damage orb did manage to bounce back right to the cart, which I'm kind of impressed by. I don't think that you planned that, but it worked out. That was intentional. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get on you about that one, even though I already did. That was a good damn job. Um, too bad I didn't get any use. I definitely see the, the intention there. I'm not gonna give you any um flack for that one. Um, I get it. That's that's also fair. I, okay, one thing I'll mention is I'm really glad that you're using damage orb so frequently. Like pretty much whenever you have it off cooldown, you start you use another damage orb. So at this point, it doesn't really matter if you waste one or two damage orbs, just because you're gonna get another one really soon. I, I like the aggressive usage of damage orb. I don't see many Moiras do that, and I, I like it. <laughs> I don't so much mind if you use a, an ability away from a team fight that doesn't get much use. Of course, you can always go if you're like if you can predict where the enemy is going to be. It's often better just to use a damage orb in that direction. But eh, I'm okay with that. So this is always dangerous. When a Zarya hasn't used Bubble yet, and you know that they haven't used Bubble yet, throwing damage orbs at a solo Zarya is often risky, especially if they're by themselves, when they're more likely going to use a bubble. Um, when going against a, a bubbled target, or even a Zarya that hasn't used Bubble, I typically will wait for them to use a bubble before I throw a damage orb, unless they're right next to a larger group of enemies, where I'm pretty much sure that... Um, it's gonna get slowed down and used. I do VOD reviews for free at the moment. I might change that if there's an increased demand for it. <coughs> but yeah, with, with Zarya, you always have to be careful when they use bubble because you, you, it might end up completely wasting your orb. God, that was such an aggressive grab. Oh my god, <laughs> Zarya just is totally willing to die for just getting that grab off. Kind of a throw. Mm, not much you could do here. They got anti. Ooh, that is a very aggressive um, use of EMP there. I don't know if they. I think so. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you so much, incomplete. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you so much. That means a lot. I'm really glad to be able to provide critique on your gameplay and I really appreciate that it's awesome five gifted subs <laughs> I guess I'll continue through the Vulcan improvements okay let me go back just a little bit thanks so much again that means a lot okay I'm still distracting myself <laughs> Okay, the aggressive EMP, I'm hoping that that Sombra was calling out that EMP, otherwise that's kind of a th kind of a throw. Yeah. I don't so much mind that you faded there because your positioning wasn't so great given that you were 
your main tank is down, your off tank is kind of behind your team, I guess. It's good that you got out of there when you did, even though there was a tire. I think you're, you've lost this team fight anyway, so it doesn't really matter who gets tired here. Okay, you have ult now. Ooh, you can get this pick on the Zen. Nice. That's really good. Oh, but I would be I would be more aggressive now. So you got the pick on the Zen and then you back off. I don't completely understand why you did this because they don't have tons of damage that you that that'll just melt you. They don't even have Discord now. So if that Zarya wants to kill you, just I think you could probably go after the Zarya here. And depending on who's around this corner, I'd probably go after someone other than Zarya because Zarya is kind of more difficult to take down. So you saw the opportunity to go for the Zen, which is really good, and you was, were super aggressive to get that kill. But then here's a Junkrat that's right here who's is trying to run away from a Sombra. He's probably at half health right now, and you kind of ignored him. I feel like it was a really good start about the with the with the Colossus, but then you sort of just decided not to be aggressive anymore, like at all, and. Typically with abilities like that don't that you don't get every ten seconds, you generally want to commit a little bit more more to these abilities because they're more um, they're not as easy to get, I guess. You want to get more value out of them. And increasing the amount of value that you're providing to your team is gonna definitely help you rank up. And making a decision like this to back off is going to, I think, take away from your progress in raking up. Just just the fact that you made that decision not to be super aggressive right here, I think, kind of shows more about... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to make, like, overarching <laughs> assumptions, but definitely commit to a big ultimate like this. I do like this, that you immediately threw a damage orb right after you use Coalescence. This is something I do a lot if I didn't immediately use damage orb upon using Coalescence because damage orb does come off cooldown a little bit after Coalescence ends if you used a damage orb Coalescence combo. So I like this damage orb. It could have been better aimed though. I think you shot it directly at the payload. Typically in this situation, I would throw a damage orb below the payload. What I mean by this is um, you kind of bounce it so it bounces between the payload and the ground and anyone standing next to the payload is going to get hit by that. It's kind of funny <laughs> and they can't really do anything about it. In this situation I think the damage orb just bounces away. What happened there? Oh, <laughs> the Rhine got interrupted with by the hook. That's kind of funny. No, there's nothing you can do here. Nana Rhine is one thing that you cannot outheal as Moira. I think only with Coalescence and Healing Orb can you outheal a Rhine like that. Oh wait, sorry. Um. I think, I mean, I could do like a live interview, but I don't, I don't know how much that would be helpful. I mean, maybe it would. I've never done it before, so I don't know. I know Jane does that type of thing. I think it would just be a lot of me like spewing out a point and then, I don't know, it would almost seem, I wouldn't feel really, it'd be like, you know when you're like some, Backseat gaming with someone, it never feels good. I don't think. I feel like this is. I don't like being a backseat gamer, so I, I I prefer it this way. But if you guys would prefer the other way, then you can try it out later. Okay. 
this is good. I'll note here that if you use your cult, I mean, if you use your body grass peeling a little more effectively right here, you wouldn't have to use a healing orb. I think what I'm seeing is that you are using, you're trying to heal up everyone with your body grass, but then you realize, oh, this is just taking too long. If I throw a healing orb, I'll just get it, get everyone healed up immediately, which is true, but it also means that you're not going to have a damage orb available to get more um, ult charge if the enemy is holding close at this point. So it's a small, de it's a small thing that um, I would probably even mess up that that, but it's just something to note. Always thinking about how to get more ult charge. Damage drop does not refill bad grasp. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm confused. <laughs> I was kind of distracted. Oh, you can you hear someone walking around, I see. I think the McCree's like above you or something. That wasn't terrible. Um it happens. That was really tough to make a decision whether to like go forward or go back because the dragon is kind of forcing you to in my situation if i was going to be in the situation i would think oh no i have to continue to walk forward but that's super risky given the entire team is there um i don't know uh that, that's just unlucky i think That was a good orb. I really like that placement. It was so precise. I, I like that. Another good orb. Good heals, good heals. Yes, damage orb. I like it. I really like the use of damage orb there. That. I don't know completely what you were thinking, but the use of damage orb there is not intuitive, I would say. Because they're using transcendence, your Orisa's low, the entire team is on her, yet you, you use a damage orb. The reasoning, I, I would do this, I don't know what your reasoning was, but is because you get moral charge, That's it's pretty simple. And you will be able to keep your Arissa alive. I think she just used her Fortify. She's being healed by Zenyatta. Oh, I don't think she's going to die here, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, she just used her Fortify. She's being healed by Zenyatta. And then you immediately go to healing her. You know, we'll see. Oh, yeah, she's good. Well, I think if your Arissa played a little better there, she would have she would have lived. <laughs> I mean, she was completely with your team. The Zarya, this Zarya should have been punished. Whatever. I would have expected her to live. But really good play from you, I think. It is her fault. No, yeah, just it's, it's completely. <laughs> this is like relatable moments. Um, very, very relatable. Oh, it was Nano Zarya? I didn't even realize that was Nano. But still. I don't know. I agree with damage or abuse there. I'm not going to take that back. Despite your Arisa dying. Hold on. Why did your Arisa die here? Oh, you don't have any healing. Well, where did all your healing go? I see, you never really had any to begin with. So you're low on healing. You have your ult. I see, that's why. I 
I feel like you're using a little bit too much healing than you, than you need to, especially because you don't, you're not being super aggressive with your damage. I'd like to see you use right click a little bit more than I am seeing, because a lot of times it seems like you just wait to recharge healing manually. I mean, not manually, but um, just waiting to recharge healing by with time instead of going for aggressive plays to get more healing back. I think you, you use a little bit too much healing than you need. Like in this situation, that um, Arisa is being healed by your Zenyatta. And you go for about one full second of holding down healing resource just to heal her up. I would just go for a small tap. Like, you really don't need all that healing, especially because it seems like there's been multiple situations I've seen where your healing resources are really low and you lose someone because of that. So try and be a little more conservative with your with heals. Good damage orb. I like the placement there. It'll bounce all the way to the back line. That was a good kill. So the reason your Arisa died there, getting back to that point earlier, was because I feel that you didn't, you didn't manage your healing resources effectively enough. You should try and aim for at least like a quarter of your healing resources before a team fight starts. And if you can't do that, your main tank is probably going to struggle a lot to stay alive. I mean, but there's also the fact that she's Arissa and she has fortify ability that she probably didn't use at the right time. It's not always your fault, but you can make up for your teammates' bad decisions. Our time runs short. We must increase our efforts. I can't this forth. I need to recharge. At this point, you're so low on healing resources, I might not go for this many damage orbs. I'm seeing this is this has been kind of a problem this not this entire game but more or less this past these past couple minutes in the game is trying to keep your healing resources up i don't object to going for this many damage orbs but your positioning is not super aggressive so you're not going to get a lot of that healing resource typically when i go for a damage orb i'll try and follow it up with by grasp to get even more pressure applied to whoever is being touched by the damage orb Like, your hog just dies here. Only The only reason your hog died there, I feel like, is because you're low on healing resources. And you could have saved him with a healing orb. There's a McCree above you. <clears throat> okay, well, your Arisa kind of feeds. <laughs> uh, I don't know how she died behind shield there. You have a lot of ultimates on your side. It's also it's interesting to be able to see the enemy's ultimates too. They have they have everything. So pretty much both teams have every single ultimate. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this plays out. Um, in this situation, if you're like excellent at ult tracking, which I, I'm not even good at this good at ult tracking, I would not know this. But given the entire team has ultimates, Kalasens is typically a more expendable ultimate. So I. would Go for an aggressive, um, uh, very aggressive usage of this. I mean, I would have a general idea that the enemy has a lot of ultimates, but I wouldn't know exactly how many, like, they have all of them. <laughs> yeah, so I'd be looking for a very aggressive ult right now. When your Arisa comes back, at this point, it might be better to swap off Arisa Hog, given your team is not coordinating any hook pulls. There's really no reason to be running this comp on attack. Yeah, forging trance, that's a good idea. I am restored. Was that called out? I want to know if your Sombra called that EMP out. Um, do you remember if that was called out? 
I know that's probably not easy to remember, but uh, I hate that because your your entire they she EMP'd your their entire team, and you your team was not able to follow up in any of this. It doesn't seem she wasn't in comms. Great. <laughs> well, let's just hope that the Zen dies. Is it one health? Okay, good. This is a good coalescence. Really, really good. Um. That was a really good shot by the Hanzo. I think you were no, you weren't discorded. They can't discord through <laughs> hack. Um, you were moving in a kind of predictable way. I do get killed by by this a lot a lot of times too. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just say I'm unlucky. You went for an aggressive play and were punished for it. It, it happens. Oh, she was two stacked with the Arissa? Well, that explains it. <laughs> They're both kind of playing like bots. What? How did you dodge that? Was that like that's the perfect distance? Okay, um. Yeah, this is lost. I would not expect anything to come from this. Okay. Wait, I'm actually interested. How many ults did you have? Okay. Your team did use all their ults. I'm okay with this. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Mm. I don't really like this damage herb. If you're gonna go for an early damage herb, I would recommend making sure it gets a lot of use out of it. If you've watched my any of my games in Rialto, I typically have I I have like two really good spots I use Orbat. One is I go up onto the little balc balcony ledge up here and I fire it right into this area here, parallel to the ground, and it bounces back and forth until it reaches the, the spawn doors. I'll fire it typically three seconds before game start. Yeah, you can get an easy 11% ult charge instantly with an orb. It doesn't feed the healers, enemy healers too much ult charge. It's it's very worth it. Worth it. I think maybe you were gonna. <laughs> oh god, that arm! You're probably gonna go for um, a widow if they had a widow that's gonna peek there. I'm thinking that's what you were you had in mind, because you planned on this orb before you saw the Ana. So I don't so much mind that if they did have a widow or Ana. You did fire the orb a little bit late though. <laughs> Bye, Ryan. So, this positioning is very comparable to Mercy. If you're playing Mercy, this would be a very ideal positioning. But you're not playing Mercy, you're playing Moira. I'd go for a little bit more aggressive play style here. You could be up with your tanks, dealing damage, not just sitting back and healing. You see how your healing resource is already super low? I feel like if you were up close with your tanks and focusing the same targets they're focusing, you would be getting a lot more value out of Moira here. Uh, yeah, at this point, you could you could be playing Mercy and you'd be getting the same value out of this character. Like, I can't even say how much this is, um, like ideal Mercy positioning. It just is. I I feel like it's just kind of interesting because if I were to play Mercy, this is exactly the positioning I would take. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly hiding around corners and dodging any potential damage. 
But as Moira, you can tank so much of that damage and just get it back with the Bad Grasp. Ooh, you're, who's that hog? Kind of out of position. Your Arissa is feeding again. Does she just expect to be healed up instantly when she makes a bad decision? Okay, call essence. Yep, that's good. You're down two, though. Your Arissa's kind of letting you down here. Like, you're not playing that badly. I mean, you, I generally really like your playstyle on Moira. I feel like your main tank completely threw this for you. <laughs> nice stall. And you get out. Okay, you almost got alive. That was good. <laughs> what are they running that's just so powerful? Like, your team is not standing up to them at all. They're running Ryan, Diva, Ash, Hanzo. So they have a ton of frontline damage that your tanks don't seem to be able to deal with very well. Yeah, if they have snipers, it's a good idea to play with tanks. In this situation, your Arissa is far too aggressive. Um, you're running... What are you running? Symmetra? Um, Junkrat? That's very unconventional. I don't expect that to hold up to a very... more conventional comp like this. I think this is more of a team comp problem than anything. I don't think you're playing very badly here. I just think it's really tough with, with these team comps. Um, this is... I'm not going to say a lot about this, but... Um, you should have known that Ryan has Chatter here. Given he hasn't used it at all this entire round, and he's being super aggressive, like he's up there holding his shield. Yeah, you could have dodged that, but it happens. <laughs> God, this is a mess. I. I hate to say it, I'm not, I don't have much commentary on your play right now, just because you guys are getting rolled. There's just not much to say. <clears throat> I was about to get so mad at your wrist if she died there. <laughs> I mean, I'm already kind of pissed, but that, that much more. Ooh, here's a good time to ult. Nice. Nice, this is really good. So that was a really good ult. Um, one small commentary I have about it is you switch targets a lot, which when you're using Kalos and switching targets will typically decrease the value of your ultimate. What I mean by this is if you switch targets, they will have time to heal up, reposition, if you got anyone low with your ultimate, they're probably not going to die if you start switching targets now. At the end of, the, of your ultimate, you go for targeting the Ana, which, um, which is a really good target to focus on because she can't get a ton of healing from her teammates given she's the main healer. But you went for this decision a little bit too late. Also, you, I think you let a teammate die when you're focusing Ana. Not that this is a big issue, I sometimes will let someone on my team die just so I can get a really val valuable pick. But if you had made the decision to focus on a single target before that, um, I think you could have gotten more picks because you almost killed the Lucio as well. Of course, they did have a Diva Bomb. I, I probably would have done in here. You did a good job dodging it, but you ended up kind of wasting some of your ultimate just to get away from Diva Bomb. I might have gone around to the boat area where you have a little bit more um, 
You have better angles on the enemy, and you can also dodge Diva Bomb more effectively. Yeah, you completely back up. I probably would have gone, like, through this little doorway here and got on the other side of this wall. I don't exactly see where the Diva Bomb is, but I assume it's going to explode on your side of the wall. I don't even know. This Hanzo has been hitting shots. Okay, they have three ults. You have a rip tire. <laughs> the Diva did not need your orb. So a thing to mention with dynamite is when you hit get by when you hit when you get hit by dynamite, if you don't anticipate taking direct damage in the next six seconds which I don't think you would in this situation, I'd use Fade immediately, just so you can get rid of that effect, the burning effect. Not only is it super... It doesn't charge Ash's ultimate super fast, but it's really annoying. I, f I feel like it really distracts me from what I have to focus on. Um, yeah, I would just hit Fade right here, unless you anticipate them using ult super super soon here. Because you don't... You know, you not only have to worry about your teammates' health, like the Zen, but you also have to worry about your own. And that's just... You don't have to focus on that if you don't want to. I just hit Fade. Okay, well, that tire was very valuable. <laughs> your hog is feeding. I like this. Going after the Ash. One thing I will note is that you didn't really turn back to look at your team that much, given, I mean, your, your team, their team was already down a couple picks, but if you're going to go after a target like this solo, just take a quick glance back at your team to make sure they don't need any help, because if they were to lose that fight, you lose the game. Um, just uh, maybe a little bit more awareness for your team's health. I mean, they were they ended up being fine. But it's always really risky, especially in this situation, to go for a pick like that. Nice fade. <clears throat> okay, good. They're wasting ults. What rank? This is 3400. Yeah, using Fade to remove Diva. If I almost always do that, if I don't anticipate any damage coming, I'll use it for anti-nade um, even more than I use it for dynamite. What other anti? What other debuff effects are there? Thank you so much, um, Black. Wait, Blackbird Trainolds. <laughs> Thank you so much for the so much for the Twitch Prime. I really appreciate it. <coughs> oh yeah, no problem. I. I, I, I definitely want to keep on doing these. These are fun. Really appreciate it. Hold on. Let me look at that again. Hmm. Uh, you, in this situation, you actually had the healing resource to keep your brig alive. You just decided not to. I guess one thing I'll note is your APM is a little bit low. What I mean by this is, is actions per minute, pretty much. You need to make quicker decisions in order to keep your team alive in this situation. Like it, I think it took you a couple seconds before you decided to start healing your team, and they needed healing be way before that. Um, you you do a good job of switching between heals and damage. I will say that, but this. I think your decision to start healing here was really was just too slow, and you could have kept your brig alive. I don't know the best way to practice this. Um, it's not an easy skill to um, to get. I'm trying to think of how I developed it because I feel like I'm I feel like my APM is really good. Just um, 
constantly surveying what's going on and never tunnel visioning. It's just, it's a really tough skill to, to get. Yeah, just, <laughs> it's hard to say, just make quicker decisions. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what to say here, but um, just realizing what's going on. God, this is difficult. Advising someone how to get better game sense is not easy. But in this situation, I think that um, you're focused on the Ryan the Shatter. Yeah, that's good. But you just have to you have to focus on everything. Like it's it's good that you're doing that, but it's not enough in in, mo in a lot of situations. I don't know. How do you send a vod in? Um, there's you can join my Discord and there's a a vod submissions tab. Depending on how many vods I get, I might start charging for them. Maybe, <laughs> although um, I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Oh, wait, sorry. What are you saying, Beach Jesus? Um, get caught in the crossfire. Yeah, I do like the positioning of being kind of aggressive and leading. Like, you're putting yourself in a position to be very able to get more damage done but it's just not it's not enough to help your team yeah APM just comes through playing the game I agree it's just it's impossible to advise really nice focus oh my god that's really good that's really good excellent use of coalescence that was amazing so you completely targeted that Ana, and then you went right to the your Reinhardt and did not switch targets. I um very, very impressed that I think it'll win you the team fight. We'll see. Oh, I wish you have a trance now. <laughs> but No, that never mind, not not trance. Yeah, really good coalescence. This is a very nerve-wracking game, considering they only have to move the card a little bit, and you have so much more time. I mean, they have so much more time. Hey, Corgi. Yeah, he's landing some nades. Um, in this situation, I might have actually gone for a da for a healing orb. Um, maybe bounce it. Uh, horizontally between these two walls here. I feel like your team is taking a lot of damage and you, and you could definitely um, saving resources here is a very is very important because you just don't have the time to get your he healing back. Uh, this is a, another time I've seen you do this, where you toss a damage orb way higher than it needs to be. So if you're aiming for someone in this room, which I think you were, um, just toss the damage orb a little bit lower so it kind of grazes the bottom floor of this little alcove instead of tossing it so high. Because it, while it did get some ult charge from the people standing below, it could have been completely used up and you could have had your ultimate already. There's no reason to throw it so high. That was a good coalescence. I'll say that you could have saved your Rhine and Brig here. Wait. Did your Rhine die? No. Their Rhine died. I didn't really like how you started this, but it was a good coalescence. So your Rhine is pretty much one health right now. Note that Coalescence beam range is so long. You don't need to be standing this close to the enemy to use it. I would have 
stood a little bit behind your teammates so you can heal them up and do damage at the same time. Of course, this limits your ability to go and chase them down once they go around this corner to escape. But um, if you were to lose two teammates here and maybe not get any kills with this coalescence, that would be the team fight. I would just abuse the fact that coalescence has an extremely long range and heal up your teammates maybe just a, even a little bit. They only need like one seconds of so, second of coalescence, and you move extremely fast with coalescence active. I would have gone to heal up your teammates here, and damage the enemy. You could get both done at the same time. Of course, you did go for a very risky play, and it paid off. I'm totally for that. I just think maybe it was a little too risky. I almost never say that, but <laughs> yeah, good play overall. It worked out. Thanks, anyone. Perhaps a new methodology is required. Another interesting damage replacement. Uh, I don't, I don't like this when you throw that, throw them so high. Just yeah, work on throwing them more into the team. I do realize they have a D.Va, so you want to avoid that, but a better way to avoid D.Va eating your orbs is to throw the orbs really low to the ground so the D.Vas don't even see them. So if you're like throw an orb right here, like right along this little staircase here, the D.Va won't even see it coming. I mean, they can hear you use the ability, but maybe they think it's going somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like throwing it that high is very visible. And it could be, it could be getting more use. Ooh. <laughs> nice fade. I like the aggression here. That's actually pretty good. You made their Ana use their use sleep dart. I think you baited out a couple other abilities as well. Um, that's exactly what you want to do in these types of situations. Moira's great at baiting out abilities. Why is that even not dead yet? Okay, she's dead. <laughs> That's good damage herb. I like chasing down that ash. Yeah, you got some good value from that. You're right? No, that's your brig. A little bit too aggressive. <laughs> You didn't need a healing orb here. You're actually full on resources and you have coalescence. So unless you're super low on resources and you need to heal them without using coalescence, I would just save it for a damage orb. Damage orb. You should use damage orb here because you have transcendence going, and um, they don't have the effects of beat anymore. So if you if you were to go ahead and focus the target with damage orb right now, I'm pretty sure you could land a kill. I mean, you're most likely gonna end up dying for it, but given this the time and the payload positioning, um, probably gonna lose anyway. <laughs> but it's worth it's worth trying to get a kill, I guess. Yeah, you could. You probably could have killed Lucio here. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you hate to see it. The ass just hard scoping on the payload. Uh, <laughs> the fact that she can, can get away with that is is a little bit depressing. <laughs> Oh well. Okay, let me think. Wait, there's more? Or is this just... Uh, 
Okay, so I guess I'll try and recap a little bit. Um, Coalescence usage, usage is, is generally really good. Don't swap targets as much. I definitely saw you had some really good coalescences in there, but then another couple were mediocre. <laughs> Just try and stay on the same targets, especially if you're going to go for damaging. Um, for healing, it's not as important to stay on the same targets because your teammates aren't exactly going to avoid your healing. But definitely for damaging targets, try and stick the same targets and go for the squishies, which I, th I definitely saw you doing. Um, you're the <laughs> yeah, um, damage orbs could use some help in terms of placement. Not in terms of usage, though. I like how aggressive you are with the damage orbs. Just try and get more value out of them. Um, and I think a bigger problem I was, I was seeing was in terms of healing resource management, which is mostly a result of your positioning, which affects not only your play style, but your ability to get more resources. You're playing kind of passive until you're aggressive, in which case, and then you're super aggressive. I feel like more... Um, balanced play style between those two would be better because you clearly know how to play both play styles i just i think that you either are doing one or the other and it's not super it makes your play style not super consistent um if that makes sense um yeah I, I, i'm fully committed to the idea that when you are low on resources it's not anything to do with your healing resource management it's just positioning it's really based on positioning. If you can be more aggressive as Moira, and be and play safe, you're gonna you're not gonna have a problem with healing resource management. Um, for <laughs> passive aggressive play style, that is that is a trademark waiting to happen. <laughs> I like it. Um, what was I gonna say? Healing orb usage is generally not bad. I think there were some situations where you didn't have to go for healing orb and some situations where you did that you kind of, you weren't so sure about. But that's not the end of the world. Um, I think this comes with a lot of a lot of time. I don't know how much you grind this game, but your game sense could use some improvement. It's not that bad. You're really good at this game, clearly. But everyone could be better. And there's some situations I saw where game sense did let you down. Like, try, you're trying to use coalescence to get some kills, but you end up letting some of your teammates die. Um, I think this is also another aspect of your... Um, God, I'm trying to keep all these ideas in my head. What was I even saying? What, what I was talking about before with... Um, being aggressive and being passive like that type of play style development um just comes from playing the game more and getting more used to what works and what doesn't work yeah i i don't know how much you play this game but i feel like if you really dedicated some time time to like studying your gameplay not necessarily necessarily reviewing vods or anything like that but just just playing the game a lot more and focusing on not dying and um, improving your play style. I guess that's... Oh, fade usage I could talk about. I didn't have any issues with fade usage, honestly. I think it was pretty good. Um, given your positioning, you were doing fine with fades. Remember to use early damage orbs in ideal spots. I don't think that that I mean of course this is only one instance I'm sure you're okay with damage orbs early damage orbs yeah and if anyone has any questions feel free to ask I guess that's it